Hey guys, this is Coach Galt. Um, today we're going to be looking at why the Grand Alliance um, broke, um, why Russia, or Soviet Union, the United States, and Great Britain all kind of fractured um, as war allies and then looking after the war leading up to the Cold War. Um, so this does go right along with your um, assignment for today and this week, uh, looking at the different uh, conferences. Uh, so there's a lot of ideological differences that we talked about before, um, capitalism versus communism. And we know World War II that uh, Nazi Germany does invade the Soviet Union. And so they also declare war on Japan and the or Japan also declares war on the United States and Nazi Germany declares war on the United States as well. So um, again, the enemy of my enemy is my friend, so for right now, they put aside their differences and they start forming this military alliance called the Grand Alliance. And so we're going to look today at Tehran Conference, Yalta Conference, and Potsdam Conference, um, and how by 1946 it's going to break down completely. It breaks down in a number of steps. Um, and. Today, I'm really just trying to focus on the conferences. So first one is the Tehran Conference in November 1943. So thinking about where we're at in the war, uh, the United States, D-Day has not happened yet. Uh, the United States has joined the war in North Africa and in Italy. Uh, Stalin is still trying to fight back the Nazis. The Nazis are still pushing into uh, the Soviet Union for the most part. And so this is between Stalin, Churchill, and FDR. And for the most part, this worked pretty well. Like we figured out like, hey, we can work together. Um, but the biggest problem was in the post-war aims specifically of Stalin. So again, during the war militarily, these guys got together pretty well and they worked together pretty decently. Um, but the differences were the post-war. So again, uh, at this point, uh, Germany is beginning to retreat. The, we have started island hopping. We started looking for those weaker islands. Uh, and we had just decided that we are going to do D-Day. D-Day is going to come out of the Tehran Conference. The problem um, insists is after the war, but we do agree that we need an unconditional surrender, um, and we set the date for D-Day, June 6, 1944, because Stalin wanted the United States and Great Britain to attack Germany from the other side, not just um, from one side of where the Soviet Union is. Poland is going to be an interesting issue um, during these conferences. Uh, Poland is right next to Germany, and it's going to be the country between Germany and the Soviet Union. Basically, eventually it's going to fall under the realm of the Soviet Union, but Poland was such an interesting thing because um, you're going to have a bunch of Poles who flee Poland because they see the Nazis coming, and then they're going to try to come back. Uh, Eastern Europe, the Soviets, they want to maintain control of the Baltic states, um, Finland, Romania. Um, and again, this is the main differences between Great Britain, the United States, and the Soviet Union is that Eastern Europe and Poland, included with Eastern Europe, is eventually going to become part of that Soviet Union umbrella. The United States and so and uh, UK, England and the United States, they they're like, okay, if we open a second front against Nazi Germany and Hitler, like we want the Soviets to come help us fight the Japanese. Um, eventually, I do believe that would have happened before um, the atom bomb, uh, if the nuclear bomb was not a, an option. Uh, the, the UN, uh, so again, the United Nations, so at this time, we know the League of Nations sucks at this point, and it gets de demolished. And so the British and Soviets both agree 
um, with the United States that we need a new international organization with this idea of collective security. So um, some really good things that happen is that the United Nations idea comes out of this um, Tehran conference, uh, but the main disagreements are still on those post-war demands.